The 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. I think Islam hates us. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. The divisions in America still deep one week after the election. Many people are afraid to go out in public being visibly Muslim. In several U.S. cities, investigations are underway into possible hate crimes against Muslims. Surveillance video shows a suspect punching, kicking, and stomping on a Muslim teenager and the beating took place outside a mosque during a midnight prayer service. With a stroke of a pen, President Donald Trump signs an extreme vetting executive order. The measure bans refugees refugees from Syria indefinitely and imposes strict controls on travelers from several Muslim countries. Breaking news, protesters pack O'Hare after dozens of people are detained. And this is video of a man holding a child. We believe this is one or two of the people that were detained. We are going to get the bad ones, uh, the really bad ones. We're getting them out and that's exactly what we're doing. I think that uh, in the end, everyone's going to be extremely happy. And I will tell you right now, a lot of people are very, very happy right now. And I was really excited to see my aunt. The media and the whole world will soon see, as we begin to take further actions, that the powers of the president to protect our country are very substantial and will not be questioned. Ahmed Rahab of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Chicago says they're ready for the next round. Every time they challenge the Constitution and the rights of Americans and others, we will stand to defend those rights. And we're in it for the long run, just as he is. The whole harassment has started about four or five years ago. I started my law enforcement career 15 years ago. I was terminated based on my religion, being a Muslim. I was harassed, I was bullied, I was pushed around, and no one ever listened to my complaint. As a Jew, for hundreds of years in Europe, Jews have been subjected to the same sorts of persecution that we're seeing now starting against Muslims in the United States. And uh, to see all this happening again now in the 21st century is deeply troubling and frightening and should be, I think, to everyone who has any kind of respect for human rights. My fear is that this could be a precursor for what's to come. We don't know um, what this means, not only for the Muslim community, but other minorities. I feel like Muslims are definitely the canary in the coal mine at this point. Especially like all the girls who wear hijab, you know, in public. You know, when you see your mom or your sister walking in front of you or behind you or next to you, and then you see people, everyone looking at them. They told me that I hold a gun like a Muslim, like a terrorist Muslim. I served this country. I wore a blue uniform with an American flag on my patch for approximately over 15 years. I got their back. I pulled them out of the fire. When they fell down and broke a wrist, I put them back on my squad car. I took them to the hospital. When they were shot in the shoulder, uh, I helped them. And this is how they treat me. I wonder how many Muslims in the country are going through this and being bullied and being harassed. Many Muslim communities that have relocated here recently are fleeing violence that, that we, as the United States, right, inflicted on their home countries. I hope that all of us recognize that something needs to be done. We cannot continue to sit idly by. Growing up in America post 9-11, there's always been a need for the Muslim community to be advocated for, and there's always been a need, um, in my lifetime at least, where the Muslim community didn't have the representation it needed. Um, but never in the past 20 years have I seen it be so desperately in, in need of help, um, in need of aid, and in need of people who can advocate. That's why I think Care Chicago is one of the most important organizations that does the most important work for the most desperate community. We work on immigration. The next day I could be working on a, a case where we're suing the government because they're discriminating against uh, our clients. So it's, it's just a really unique experience and every day is different here at Care Chicago. Every time I get a phone call, every time um, I talk to someone, I know that we're about to help someone get to a better place than they're at right now. A lot of my favorite moments with the organization have to be with my interns and volunteer activists. They really always shine some type of light. They reinvigorate me and I enjoy just the diversity that they bring forth to the office. The first place that came to mind, it was the place that I see the most, hear the most from, that does the most work in Chicago and around the nation. Um, and because of all the good work that they do, this is where I wanted to invest my time. I'm a member of the Jewish community and I think that I have just as big of a responsibility as 
you know, my Muslim neighbors around me to ensure that there's uh, fairness and safety that surround my neighbors. Care Chicago has negotiated the payment of nearly $1.3 million to its client community. Care Chicago attorneys have handled more than 4,000 cases of anti-Muslim discrimination. More than 200 uh, individuals have been assisted by Care Chicago in dealing with uh, contacts by the FBI. This past year, the research department has worked on a 300-page database that will be turned into a website based on oppositional research and focusing on Islamophobes and bigots. We have been interviewed over 1,300 times in mainstream media and have been mentioned over 15,000 times in local and international media. It is complete smokescreen and mirrors, um, looking to ban Muslims, looking to clamp down on minority com communities, Latinos here, African Americans there, Muslims there, in the name of national security. So we've actually seen an increase of Islamophobic attack since the start of the presidential election. Refugees ought to be welcome on the merit of their cases, regardless of their religion or national origin. It isn't a question of Muslims persecuting Christians in those countries. It's a question of ISIS and these renegade groups and dictatorships persecuting Muslims and Christians. There is a normalization going on here for something that is very frightening happening in America, and it excludes and ignores the rhetoric and the types of individuals who are in this administration, Steve Bannon and his track record on Muslims, running Breitbart, one of the worst Islamophobic, anti-Muslim, racist, anti-Semitic websites in the world, now being empowered in the White House. We are the we, we're not part of the other. People come here from all over the world, they come to America, they become American, they seek refuge here, uh, they escape war. When I was left out, there was no one to help me. Everybody wanted money. Here in Chicago, open hand, open arm. They came and gave me a hug when I walked in that office. They said, Ram, we got your back. We have your back, we will fight for you. So that's important. That's, that, means, that's mean, that, that means the whole world. Care Chicago is a community organization that was created by this community, for this community, funded entirely by this community. I work at Care Chicago because I'm committed to civil rights and fighting for the rights of those who can't fight for their own. My favorite part about working at Care Chicago is the people that I work with. Their dedication, their commitment makes me love what I do even more every day. So all I have to do is stay strong and ask my fellow brothers like Care Chicago, who, who supported me and who told me got my back, to continue the fight, not just for me, but for all the Muslims. And, and CARE is the guarantor for protecting your, your achievements and making sure that the mosque that you're going to build is going to stay there. It's going to last there. It's not going to be burnt down to the ground. When I'm working at CARE, I, I come home and I've done something to make the world a little bit better. Um, and it's, it's, it reminds me of why I went to law school and it, it's, it's keeping me here. That CARE is one of the, these organizations that reminds us there's always hope and there is always a better day for us in the future. Now is a moment of like all of us or none of us and that we're in this together. It's particularly important to support Care Chicago right now because our civil liberties are on the line. It doesn't matter which group you may identify with. If any group is being marginalized or discriminated, it affects all Americans. Care Chicago is one of the strongest voices really speaking clearly about Muslim human rights in the United States and also partnering with other groups and making this issue a truly intersectional issue. The work that we do at CARE Chicago now is even more important and necessary than it's ever been before, especially in lieu of the new administration. Impact. Respect. Unrelentless. Resilience. Justice. Unapologetic. Engaged. Resilience. Justice. Educate. Advocacy. Resilience. Solidarity. Persistence. Intersectionality. Resilience. Determined. Community. Implacable. Resistance. Stay fierce. Unity. Care Chicago. Resilience. 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 Care Chicago. Care Chicago. Care Chicago. Care Chicago.